Hello and welcome to this Contracts Expert 2018 video. In this first video we're going to have a look at importing a job from Estimator Express to create a small works contract and before that we're going to have a quick look around the main menu. There'll be further videos where we go into more detail on the manual creation of a small works contract and also the manual creation of a subcontractor contract. So on the main menu, over on the left hand side the first thing we have is your registered details if your company changes its name, changes address, etc., you can change this by simply clicking on the address, which brings this box up and allows you to make changes to your details. Over here on the left hand side, you'll see that you have uh, different types of groups for any address that you do create in Contrast Expert, and for yourself, you're most likely going to be the builder contractor. So, over onto the main menu. At the top we have a new contract option here, now this will allow us to manually create a small works or subcontract contract uh, and it will also allow us to do an import from Estimator Express. Open contract will allow us to open a previously created contract, obviously you want to do further work with. Import job is the button we're going to click on a minute to import the data directly from an Estimator Express estimate and the help and video tutorials options will both take you to the HPXL support site to videos such as this. Below here you'll see we have recent files. This list will get larger as you do more jobs and what it will do is show you the last several contracts that you've been working on so it's a quick shortcut to jump back into a recently created project. Okay so what we're going to do now is import a estimate from Estimator Express directly into Contracts Experts to use the data from that to help create our contract. Now before doing that, in Estimator Express you have to just do a small data cleanup exercise. So now for a Blue Peter moment. This is the estimate that I'm going to be importing into Contracts Expert. We need to clean up the data by going into Reports and then clicking on the delete zeros button at the top and we need to remove resources with a cost of zero. There that's done, we're now ready to import into Contracts Expert. And what that process does is it removes all build phases which have a zero pound note value. This makes the contract cleaner and removes unnecessary information from the contract. There's no point in having build phases with zero cost on your contract. Okay, so to import my estimate, I want to click on the Import Job button. This gives you a list of estimates. The job in question that I'm after is Mr. Mitchell. And this now gives you some initial information. We have a shot of with or without inflation, so I'm going to go with the without inflation figure. I've obviously got a, a large inflationary figure on my uh, estimator settings. Client's details and whether or not this is a site address. Now in this job it is the same address, so I'm going to take those. Job duration, 110 days. That has been defined by the bar chart in Estimator Express. Whether or not you want to show a price breakdown. And if you do want to show the price breakdown, you can have different levels of detail. And then whether or not you want to use milestone payments. Now, what these will do is link the payments from the client to build phases. You can untick this if you want to use a payment plan, such as, say, every seven days, every 14 days, etc. Uh, I'm going to leave mine switched on for purposes of this demonstration. Once I'm happy with these, I'm going to click on next. Okay, so the first thing you have here is you can set the contract date uh, as when published. So that could be when you actually decide to create the contract, you could set that as being the contract date, or you can specify a specific contract date. So you may want to publish this today, but you might want to specify that you want the contract date to be tomorrow, for example, or in this case, say, Monday. Specify how many days after contract you will start work. Now bear in mind if you set this to a figure of say 7 days, so which is less than 14, you will also need to make use of the start work now form where the client will sign over the fact that they will waive their rights to the 14 day cooling off period. 
Remember to do that for any contract where you start within 14 days of the contract date. You have to do it by law. We can now see the rest of the details. So I'm the builder, here's our client. You need to say whether the client is domestic or commercial. This will actually affect certain legal rights. Um, a domestic client has different legal rights to a commercial client. Is a site address the same as the client's address? In the case of this job, yes it is. If it was not, as you can see here, I left the address ticked previously for the site address. You can fill in different site address details. Is the client going to be using an authorised representative? So certain clients you may not deal with them directly you may be dealing with their solicitor for example um, certainly in a slightly more commercial environment so you can again switch this on and put in the details of their authorized representative does the builder have a responsibility for design work so that's yourself you need to say yes or no because that obviously affects your legal uh, indemnity for design side of things And then we get onto details such as descriptions of works. So for this job, I'm going to put something quite simple. That is a domestic extension. Quite simple. It doesn't have to be war and peace, just a simple description of the job at hand. Now this might sound strange, but you actually do need to agree whether or not you want to send notices via email. And a notice isn't just a general communication, that would be something that would be contractual, such as you may want to notify the clients that they have failed to pay you and you require payment before you continue further work. So that's a sort of a legal type notification. You need to agree whether or not yourself and the client are happy to do that via email or whether you prefer things in writing or via phone. And the last section here is who would like to nominate for uh, as the body to do nomination for adjudication which sounds very long-winded should the job go south for whatever reason you can sp specify a nominating body who will then assign you with an adjudicator obviously adjudication is a better process to go through rather than going through court ultimately you may decide one or the other party that they want to go through court but going through adjudication tends to be faster simpler and significantly cheaper for both parties to do so you can choose these are the most uh, commonly used bodies but there are others available if you tick other you can then decide on that later we notice down here at the bottom there's a field to verify fields on clicking next okay if you leave this on each time you click next and you have if failed to fill something in it will pop up a message so if i delete where it says domestic extension and click next it should give me a warning yeah separate warnings so here we go so do i want to review them i'm going to say yes so project details telephone number salutation and description of work so these are to do with the, the address and that's to do with the description of works that i just removed Okay, so I'm not going to go in fixing bits and bobs on the dresses for uh, demonstration purposes. I'm going to untick this now for further fields so that one message doesn't keep popping up. Normally you would leave this switched on just to make sure that you're doing everything correctly. So now we're into the details of the various components. Services that are going to be supplied by a client. So are they going to allow you to use toilet washing, etc.? use their electricity or not so you need to agree on these then your normal working hours you can be doing 9 till 5 30 or you might be doing 8 till 4 30. probably going to have sundays and no working day maybe saturdays and no working day are there any limits on how and when the site can be used quite commonly you might say yes to this and limited working hours would be for example no work before 8 a.m. or after 5 p.m., for example. Any other limitations? That could be to do with deliveries. If it's a domestic environment, uh, the neighbours may not appreciate uh, a lorry turning up at 7 o'clock in the morning to unload a pallet, etc. So you may want to put in that kind of detail. 
Again, for CDM purposes, we need to know whether this is a domestic or commercial client. Who is the principal contractor for CDM? In this case, I want to say it's me. If, it's a, if it was a third party, I could click on the address button over here, like this, and I can add a new contractor in. Who's a principal designer for CDM? So if there's design work on this job, again, you can click on the address button and add in whoever the architect is. If it's a small job, you could actually say not applicable. So now we have the price, any VAT variations, what the VAT rate is, typical price, and the profit margin on prime sum costs. Now this might sound strange, but a prime sum cost is where the client is supplying an item. So for example, the client may supply an electrician. So they could be supplying a laborer, but they want you to manage that electrician. So you can actually specify that you will charge 5% of his value on top as your management fee, for example. Or if the client is, say, supplying a kitchen, well, you want 5% extra to manage the installation of that. How long is your quote valid for? Job duration. Okay. Is there going to be a warranty? Yes or no? If there is, who's going to be supplying it? And then here is the price breakdown that we remember we switched on at the start of the job. You can see here it's by build phase. Now we went for the option with the least detail. You can tick other options which will actually break these down into even greater detail. That might possibly be overkill for the job, especially if you're supplying this on the back of an Estimator Express quote, which has probably already supplied that detail level. As you can see, we can put more on. And this will produce additional pages within the contract. I'm going to leave this on the top option to leave the contract a bit shorter. That can double the length of the contract, so do be warned. If you're not sure, feel free to give this a try because when you create the contract, it will create a PDF. You can see what it looks like. If you don't like it, you can come back to this option, change it back and produce a smaller version of the contract. If, by the way, you forget to do the option we spoke about earlier, where you deleted any build phases with a cost of zero, this is where they will come in and you'll see build phases with a zero cost. As you can see, you can actually delete them out at this stage if you've forgotten to do that. And you've now got the option for adding in costs for provisional sums. So a provisional sum is where you are guessing at the price because it is unknown. For example, you may be wanting to do some extensive drain works, for example, but there's a potential issue with the ground, so you don't know what it's going to be like, so you may take a guess at a price. Included in contract price means has this already been shown in the estimate? So if it's not been shown in the estimate, you're actually going to put it in here as an additional. Let's say we're going to allow £4,000. Okay, so what you're saying is by not ticking this, it has not been taken account in this value here. So on top of this value, you're saying there's an additional £4,000 or more as a provisional sum. If I tick this, you're saying that that's actually included, being included up here. Is an advance payment required? Yes, if so, how much? So you may require, say, £5,000 up front to get started to buy materials for footings, foundations, etc. Okay, I think this is all fairly explanatory. If there's going to be retention, what's the value? What's the retention period? Okay, 
And as we mentioned here before, you can have your payments by milestone, which is by build phase, or you can go to interim payments where you can decide like a payment every seven days, every 14 days, etc. So again, up to you. Obviously the milestone one will be on the completion of build phases. You will obviously have an idea of which is your preferred method. You then have a page for any assumptions. So any assumptions that you'd like to make, please fill them in on the screen. You can use this screen to add references to any document. So if there is an architectural plan or plans, you can make reference to those document numbers. And you can also make reference to your quote, schedule of works, etc. on here. So back to PC sums. So again, as I mentioned before, a PC sum is where a client is supplying an item. Okay, so it could be here, supplier is kitchen company. Description of PC sum could be a kitchen. Including the contract price, probably not. PC sum, so it could be say a £3,000 kitchen that the client is supplying. You're going to manage, say, the delivery of that. Obviously, you're going to charge for the installation. Then you'd include that with that. That's where that 5% surcharge comes in. Okay. Obviously, you would fill in the supplier's details and what the description was. And again, the PC sum subcontractor. So this is where the client has a subcontractor that they want to work on part of the job, but they would like you to manage. So again, you could put in details of that. So they might be supplying an electrician, for example. Okay, so that is the setup of our contract completed. As you can see, each section has a tab that you can go into so that you can review and change. So you may initially send the contract to the client. They may question something. You may agree a change, come back here, alter it, and then publish a new version. Okay, there's a separate video where we're going to go into the details of all the publishing side of things.